Hi there, I'm Beth, and today I'm getting round to something that's been on my to-do list for a while. I've already made a doll-sized boot pattern that I'm pretty happy with, but recently I was given a set of these metal prong stitching spacer tools. They're used in leather working to mark out evenly spaced holes for stitching. While my existing pattern works fine, it always bugged me that I had just eyeballed the stitch spacing. So today I'll be redrafting this boot pattern, using the metal spacers to plot the stitch holes, and making the pattern available for you to download at bethramsden.com and use yourself. The lasts you will see me using are available to buy there too. I initially started sketching on cereal box cardboard, but decided it'd be easier to make my pattern pieces with lightweight white card instead. I draw out the upper back piece on a fold for symmetry. I use a leather punch tool with multiple size options to pop out the lacing holes on my template. I use this often, very handy. You can see I also have my stitching holes marked out too. This tool is also super handy to me. I use it not only for punching the leather, but the pattern pieces too. I will link it along with the other tools used today in my FAQ page at bethramsden.com. It makes nice little holes. Next, I trace out my front upper piece, then experiment with the different tools. I can use longer ones for straight lines and the littler one to plot out curves. I place one prong in the previous hole so every hole is the same distance from each other. Once I'm happy with my template, I cut it out on the fold. I decided to use the punch tool here too. It makes a nice rounded edge without using scissors. Again, I use the narrow punching tool to mark all the stitching holes. Next, I'll redraft the inner sole piece. First though, a bit of math. The front and back upper pieces will have to overlap at either side, so I need to count the holes I have and remove two. This leaves 26 stitching holes needed around the sole, all evenly spaced too. I got really lucky and nailed it on the first try, so I have my new sole template here. The last main piece to redraft will be the outer sole, but I'll wait until the end to make it, as it'll be sized to fit the finished boot after it's been sewn and shaped around the last. I'll make my first pair of boots with this slightly pinkish red leather. It's necessary to use real leather for these boots, as they rely on wet shaping. 
My leather here is just over one millimetre thick in case you want to compare it to your own. Using a heat erasable pen, I trace round my templates onto the leather. Depending on how light or dark yours is, you may want to use a white gel pen instead so it shows up better. I trace the uppers onto my pink leather, then chose to use a slightly thicker piece for the inner soles. My leather is recycled from sofa sample books that were destined for landfill, so you might recycle accessories found in charity shops too. I cut out my sole pieces, but the stitching holes are hard to see on the soft fluffy side. You could use a white pen as I mentioned earlier, marking out each space, or use an awl or another sharp tool to punch each hole directly through the template. I use the narrow punching tool again, holding the template tight against the leather. I repeat these steps for the rest of the pieces, punching out the lacing holes and stitching holes. For the back upper pieces, it can help to dampen the leather and shape them a little like this with your fingers before sewing. For the front uppers, I use the leather punch in those tight corners again. Everything's cut out and again, if you're finding your leather to be a bit unwieldy, you can try dampening the leather and pre-shaping the pieces a little. On the sole template, I'll have the holes on either side highlighted where the front and back pieces will overlap. Transfer these markings to the back side of your template once you have yours printed out. I layer my template over the sole and mark the hole on the right side with a needle. I can remove the template and know I'm starting in the right place. The order of placement will be the end hole of the front upper and then the end hole of the back upper on top. The back will wrap around like this and then overlap on top of the other side of the upper here. First, let's thread our needles. I like to use a pretty strong thread for this. We'll be using a saddle stitch to sew the boots and you'll need to pull tight on the thread. You'll need about one arm's length of thread for sewing around the whole sole and two needles. I chose two fairly short needles with wider eyes. Thread one needle, then hold the thread tail and pierce through it with the pointed end of the needle. Pull the tail down over the needle and off the back end. Repeat this for the other end of your thread and the other needle. This secures the thread quite neatly and is very handy when using saddle stitch. This is the needle and thread you'll need for the main sewing. Before that though, I like to join the front and back uppers with a single stitch. 
You can do this with a shorter piece of thread and one needle. I'm joining these pieces through the overlapping highlighted holes and then through the slightly higher holes above them. Just a single stitch knotted at the inside and trimmed and thread ends singed with a lighter. I'll do this for the other boot now as well. Though there is a right and left boot, the uppers are identical and I personally like to sew them both the same way. I used my double-ended thread here, so I re-thread a fresh piece and can begin sewing. I use the sole template to bring a needle up through the marked hole on the right side of the sole. I have the smooth side of the leather facing up and into the boot. I remove the template and poke the needle up through the overlapping holes. Pull the thread up until the middle of the thread is at the boot, with both needles held together. Hold the thread in place while taking the upper thread's needle down through the next pair of holes along. We'll be sewing towards the toe of the boot. Hold that thread and let go of the needle. Take the other needle and bring that lower thread up through the very same pair of holes. Pull each thread tight. Now there should be one thread above and one below. Staying with the upper needle for now, bring it down into the next pair of holes along. Hold the thread tight and let go of the needle. Then repeat as before, bringing the other needle up through the same holes. The two needles will be crisscrossing through the same spaces making a sturdy stitch that looks identical above and below with no spaces between holes. Continue like this around the curved front of the boot.
Once we get round the toe to the other overlapping point, with one open hole left in the front upper, well, two, including the upper hole, bring the back upper round and put the upper needle through it and the last hole in the front upper. and down through the sole too. Down through all three layers and pull tight. Then grab the other needle and bring it up through the same three holes. This same needle will now go through the upper holes in the back and front uppers. It'll be pointing inside the boot. Pull it tight and it should look like this on the outside. Then, and it's a bit fiddly, push that needle out through the two layers of the lower hole. Essentially, we've taken one needle on a detour to add an extra reinforcing stitch to join the front and back pieces. We can now take that same needle down into the next hole along and continue the regular saddle stitch around the back of the heel. If you've pre-shaped that back heel, you might find it easier than I did here. It's a slightly awkward turn. Continue until you get back to where we started. Here I'm coming down into the first overlap hole where we started at, leaving both needles at the sole side. I snip the excess thread and tie a secure double knot. Then trim the ends and singe them carefully with a lighter. Keep track of your left and right boots and pair them with the appropriate boot last. Repeat the same steps for the other boot. Flip your sole template to locate the correct starting hole. Start your saddle stitch in the overlap spot and work your way anti-clockwise around the sole.
Here I'll show you the spot where we join the front and back uppers again, as it is a little tricky. There, I hope it helps to see that from a different angle. From there, continue the saddle stitch back to the starting point. And knot and trim your threads at the sole. There, that's my left boot sewn. Looking at the excess leather round the heel, I think I'll trim that back on the pattern. The front looks okay though. The next step is now to take both boots and run them under a tap or use a spray bottle to thoroughly dampen them. Then we'll put them on the lasts to dry. I ran mine under the tap and will now gently pat and squeeze off any excess water with a towel. I check I have the correct match and put the boot on the last, pushing the toe firmly forward. When it dries out it'll hold this shape and give us a really nice rounded toe. I'm careful to manoeuvre the seam allowance so that it all points straight out to the sides, not down or up. Again, the leather will hold this position as it dries, so we don't want wobbly edges. I still had some thread on a needle, so used it to lace the boots closed. You don't have to do this, but I like the extra wrinkles that this can make. Another thing I like to do is turn down the top edge of the boot. 
It just adds more character to a simple boot like this. Repeat for your other boot and lay them somewhere safe to dry out. While I'm waiting, I want to start drafting a slightly more complex version of this pattern. I'll include both versions in the download. I've trimmed off the excess I mentioned before, and trace this piece out twice. I'm going to draft a separate heel piece to add more interest to the back of the boots. I'll need the back upper with a cutout, and stitching holes, and a separate heel piece with matching stitching holes. I make the pieces mirrored, and transfer the holes from one piece to another. Here's the original, and the two new pieces. I'll just go ahead and make a second pair of boots to test out these additions. This pair is brown with white inner soles. I've marked L and R on the soles to keep me right once the uppers are sewn on, as it can be hard to tell. The first step for these boots is sewing on the heels. It's just a patch piece, really, and we simply use saddle stitch to sew the curved line only. Trim and knot the thread ends. Then, with a new thread, sew the single joining stitch on the right side of the boot, connecting the front and back pieces. Since I'm throwing in extras for this pair, let's add some tiny eyelets to the lacing holes. The ones I have are 2mm, I believe. I will link them in the FAQ. This metal tool is what's needed to insert them. It has a pointed and jagged shaped tip. We insert the eyelet and line up the tool, then hit the back end with a hammer. I have a metal block to do this on top of, so I don't mark my desk. There, a teeny tiny eyelet. Just repeat for all the lacing holes. While I'm on a roll, I add another detail to the back upper piece, a rivet hole to add a little loop of leather. Here's my loops, and I've used my punch tool to cut out all the holes. The leather will fold over the top of the boot like this. 
and I'll use a rivet to hold it in place. If you don't have rivets, you could instead add another eyelet in that hole or leave it out. I tried out one of these tiny rivets, but the three layers of leather were too thick for it. So I swapped it out for this bigger one, which worked a treat. These rivets are in two parts and use a concave curved tool like this to hit them with. Okay, that's all the detail I'm going to add to this pair. Now I'll saddle stitch the upper and sole together as before. My boot is sewn, and you can see there's still a little overlap, but not as much as before. Here my second pair of boots are dampened, put on the lasts, and laced, ready to dry out along with the other pair. It's the next day, and I've removed the laces from the pink boots. This leather has dried and held its shape really, really well. The results can vary with different types of leather. I'll cut away the larger overlapping pieces for now, just cutting the upper, not the sole. Here's my other pair too. There's a little overlap here and there that I'll cut off too. For this next part, I recommend a dust mask, as we'll be sanding the edges of the boots, which can get a bit messy. You can just use a piece of fairly rough sandpaper held in hand, but I am a busy, busy lady and prefer to use a rotary tool like my Dremel and a barrel type sandpaper bit. You can get these in bulk on Amazon. Take note of the direction of the bit and hold your last on the side going down or away from your face. Then what we'll be doing shortly, once I add the outer soles, will be sanding the outer edges of the boots. This will gradually wear the leather away and bring all the layers together into one smooth edge. First though I need to create the templates for the outer soles. This piece will be a little narrower and smaller than the inner sole to account for the shrinkage and changes in shape. Here I've also cut an optional heel part too. This will be layered over the flat sole to add interest. I'll cut these, mirrored into pairs, and will then glue them to the soles before I get back to sanding. This is my personal favourite fabric glue by Gutermann. I simply glue the heels to the soles, then the soles to the boots, smooth side facing out.
That's all my soles glued on, so once they dry, they're ready to sand. The three layers together make the boots look much more substantial. I'll just sand a little bit here, but in reality I like to do this directly over a bin to catch most of the leather fluff directly. Take note of the pull of the sanding bit too. If you tilt the bit, you'll find it pulls the leather unevenly. We're aiming to level out all the layers of the leather and give a nice 90 degree upright edge. Once you're happy with your edge, I recommend using this burnishing cream. It's called Tokenol, link in the FAQ, and it kind of seals and joins the leather edge. Then it gets buffed too. A little will go a long, long way, and I apply it with a foam brush. Cover the sole edge fairly generously and smooth it out if needed. After a couple minutes, you can then buff the edge to harden and polish it. Again, this can be done with a wooden edge slicker, but since I have a rotary tool, I DIY'd my own version with a little wooden thread reel. It did totally work, but my lovely mum bought me these proper slicker bits instead. Thank you, mum. This will be my first time using them, and they're just used to buff and polish the edge that's been coated in the tokenol. It's looking really good already, and I'm just going to add another coat and buff it out again. I'll also repeat this for the other boots. Here they are, all buffed up. And I have one last trick up my sleeve. Again, totally optional. I saw people including tiny bottles of leather hardener in some shoemaking kits online. I hunted some down to buy and test out myself. I always saw it being painted over the top of the finished shoe at the end, so this is what I do too. I honestly don't know if it makes a big difference, but I thought I'd show it since I have it. Once it's dried, I'll cut some shoelaces for the boots. I like this really narrow leather cord, but you could easily use embroidery floss or yarn or thick thread instead. I cut mine to about 30 centimeters, which is plenty to tie a bow after lacing. These ones laced up fine, but the pair with the eyelets were too small to fit this cord. So instead, I'm splitting a six strand piece of embroidery floss into two, three strands for each lace. I'll use a little glue to hold the ends together. I really recommend using tweezers to help lace and tie these tiny boots. Well, here are both pairs, laced and ready to finally remove from the lasts. Right, let's get these on to some feet. 
The lasts we designed were based on this body, the A-Zone style jointed body, so they fit these feet perfectly. Here's the simpler pair with the turned down tops being modelled too. I also was just given this original Lika body, so I can try them on this too. Yes, also a great fit, even without socks on. Then, very similar, the original Blythe body. A little looser, but they don't actually drop off, even being unlaced and without socks or tights. I even tried one of the very cheap AliExpress bodies, with little pointed feet. It's not the best fit as is, but can actually work with socks. Here I have an OB22 body. And again, they fit great. No problems, and you could fit socks on too. And similarly here we have the OB24 body, with some socks on already, and both pairs fit beautifully. Before you ask, yes they do fit a midi Blythe, but I think the style with the rolled down top will look best, just because they look a quite a bit smaller. I even thought I'd try them out on some other dolls, like this fashionista Barbie with flat feet. Yes. And this modern Cindy with articulated flat feet? Yes. A classic made to move Barbie body? Yes. And a curvy made to move Barbie. Yes. 
Before I finish, let me welcome in my newest patrons. Tamara Shapiro, Shirley Kouchikinia, Adolin Poem, Mind Lit Up, and Kathleen Key. Huge thanks to all my patrons for your wonderful support. So there we have it. You can combine our 3D printed shoemaking lasts with this boots pattern or with my existing Mary Jane's pattern and make all sorts of cute little boots for all sorts of dolls. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what you think of these in a comment below. Have you tried making shoes or boots for your dolls before? Do you think you would try these? You'll find links in the video description below or just head over to bethramsden.com for the lasts, the patterns and the FAQ page too. Please take care and have a wonderful day. I'll see you again soon. Bye!